Good morning, good morning, good morning, my beautiful, lovely people. Happy Friday. <laughs> this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Um, I'm sitting here trying to log on to my, I'm sitting on my computer. Um, I got a little mail. I think it's okay. I have a little mail code. Um, I'm going to try to talk as loud as possible. I don't have my earpiece today. Um, I think it's my sinus. I have a sinus cold. My throat gets a little irritated. So, um, but I still managed to push my way. Push my way this morning. Um, I didn't feel like coming to work. <laughs> I did feel like I was to work this morning, but my daughter, she told me, she was like, you already got your work clothes on. You might as well just go ahead and push your way. She was like, it's Friday. So that's what I did, push my way to work. And not only did I push my way to work, I'm going to push myself today to do this morning, um, to do this morning prayer and morning devotion, you know, because you never know who might be, um, who might be in need of prayer, who might be in need of a word on today. And I don't want to be, um, I don't want to be selfish. Like, I don't feel good. I don't feel like, I don't feel like doing a morning prayer today. I don't feel like doing, you know, morning devotion. So still, I just want to still push my, push my way and be dedicated to, um, you know, doing a morning prayer and, um, morning devotion. So, I'm going to say a, a brief prayer, and then I'm going to read the daily devotion. Uh, as I said, stay in all my videos. Y'all know if I pause my video, I'll be like, I'll be right back. That means I have a student at the door, and I tried to turn my radio down, so it won't be too much interruption. So, But I'm going to say a prayer. Um, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, in the precious mighty name of Jesus Christ, ruler of all things, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for giving me the strength and the activities of my land to come on here and share this morning prayer and morning devotion with your beautiful, lovely people on today, Lord. Whatever they in need of, Lord Jesus, Lord, I pray and ask, Father, that you meet every need on today and lead them throughout the rest of the week, Lord. Lord, I pray and ask that if there are any sickness in their body, Lord, I pray and ask the Lord, you send the healing in the name of Jesus, touch right now in the name of Jesus, whatever it is, Lord, if it's a headache, if it's a stomach ache, um, whatever the case may be, Lord, if it's COVID, Lord, if it's arthritis, if it's a flu, Lord, if it's cancer, if it's diabetes, whatever the sickness, whatever the sickness may be in their body right now, we bind it in the name of Jesus. We bind sickness in the name of Jesus. We bind headaches in the name of Jesus. We bind sinus affections in the name of Jesus. We bind sore throats in the name of Jesus. Lord, we bind heart failure in the name of Jesus. We bind arthritis in the name of Jesus, Lord. We bind leukemia, cancer in the name of Jesus. Diabetes in the name of Jesus. We bind depression in the name of Jesus, Lord. Touch right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, you are the God that heals from all illness, sickness, and disease. And Lord, I pray in that that you look upon my beautiful people on today. That you touch and heal right now and deliver in the name of Jesus. Lord, help them throughout their daily tasks. Lord, you can help them in the home while they're doing their daily tasks. Lord, help them on their job. Lord, Lord help them with their children as they do um, the, the summer, Lord, as they're getting ready, Lord. There are so many children that are getting out for the summer, Lord. I pray and ask that you put a hedge of protection. Put a hedge of protection all around our children, Lord, as they're coming out of school for the school summer. Lord, I ask and pray that you provide them the a safe place to be for the summer. Where's the summer camp, Lord? I ask that you cover them and you protect them, Lord Jesus. I pray and ask, Lord that you help us, that you cover us with your blood, Lord Jesus, the ones that's driving in the car right now on the way to work. Lord, I pray and ask that you give them a safe 
a safe travel to their destination to back. Keep your protection angels all around their vehicle, Lord. If they on the plane, Lord, if they on the train, Lord, I pray and ask that you protect them. Keep them safe in the airways, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Touch right now, Lord. Move by your power and your might. In the precious mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. 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 So, um, I'm going to read the daily devotion. Like I say, I wasn't feeling my best today. Um, I've been taking some medicine. Last, all last, last night, I was taking some medicine. So, when I get out of work today, I think I'm just going to drink some more, um, I'm gonna drink, take some more medicine because I feel. I woke up this morning. I felt like I had some body aches, and um, I was taking some for my throat. So I'm just gonna take something else when I get home. I got my breakfast here and my orange juice. I'm gonna drink it, and so um, so I'm gonna just doctor on myself, y'all. Y'all keep me in prayer. So I'm gonna read the daily devotion. The morning devotion today, it says, Destructive Pride. Destructive Pride. If you listen to constructive criticism, you will be at home. You will be at home among the wise. If you reject discipline. If you, if you reject discipline, you only harm yourself. But if you listen to correction, you grow in understanding. Um, okay, uh, and that is Proverbs 15, 31 to 32. And the daily devotion read, a natural response to criticism is a swelling of our inner pride. Critical words can make our blood boil. Yeah, yes it can. Like critical words sometimes. Sometimes when it, when somebody just push that button, they just push that button and you just, you be boiling sometimes. If you don't, if you don't humble your flesh, tell your flesh to get down, sometimes you just be like, oh, I got to say something. I, I need to. And I know me so many times God has spoke to me, said, Melissa, don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. I'm going to get him. Then just his mind, don't say nothing. But sometimes we get a boiling point. You know, our flesh, it wants to act up. And it say, we may want to reject the words immediately and turn our heads away from the unpleasantness of the situation. It never feels good to be told that we are wrong or that our approach could use some fine, tune, some fine tuning. Fine tuning, okay. So this morning when I was coming to work, and I kept saying, I kept saying, um, damn, what was the word I said? I said something to the case of like tuning. I said, oh, that's what I think. I said, I need a tune up. I said, Lord, I need a tune up. I need a tune up with, um, I said, I need a tune up in my, um, my prayer life, like my, my prayer life. I need a tune up. I kept saying, I need a tune up. And, you know, sometimes we just need, no, a touch up. That's what I said. One tune up, it was touch up. I said, because uh, I woke up this morning and I'm trying to fix my hair. And I'm like, you know what? Uh-uh. I'm going to do this uh, this Friday when I get out of work. I'm going to throw this hair down on. And I'm like, and then I'll touch it up. I'm like, I'll just touch the edges up this weekend. And then I said, not only do I need to touch up, a hair touch up. I said, I need to touch up in my spirit, God. I need to touch up. And so many of us, we might we need a touch of need. You might need a refilling. You might need to go back to the altar, or you might need to go in your prayer closet and just pray. Just pray in your heavenly language until you just feel a refilling, until you just feel that refreshing. So you don't always have to wait till you get to church to get your refilling. You can get your refilling at home as long as you have a prayer altar. You have a place where you go to pray. You can go in there and get your refilling, okay? Um, one of my brothers, um, one of my brother, when he first got saved, he got saved in his car. He got saved in his car. He didn't get saved at church. He got saved in his car. He was listening to um, Frederick, one of Frederick Casey Price um, preaching, and he got um, filled with the Holy Ghost in his car. Me, myself, I got saved at home. I got saved in my bedroom. 
Um, you can go back and listen to um, watch my video on my video on the salvation story. I got saved in my bedroom, and my mom was there. She witnessed the whole thing. So you don't have to feel like, oh, I have to go. I need to be at church. That you can wherever God knows your heart is right. You can just go in your prayer closet. Go in your prayer closet and talk to the Father. Tell Him, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I believe that. I believe that you are my. I believe you, Lord. I believe in your word. You are my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, come into my heart. Or you just can have a repentance heart. And with me, I had a repentance heart, meaning that uh, I didn't want to take that um that old the old lifestyle anymore. I didn't want to be in sin no more. I didn't want to do the old things that I want to do anymore. I didn't want to fornicate anymore. I didn't want to drink anymore. I didn't want to hang out anymore. So I went to my bedroom and I just began to cry. And I said, Lord, I don't like this lifestyle. I don't want to do this anymore. And as I began to um as I began to cry out to him, as I began, I'm trying to see if the student comes to my room. Okay, y'all, I'm back. I'm back. Um, one of the students, like I say, um, I try to get my try to want to do my devotion early in the morning because usually they don't, you know, sometimes they don't come and bother me. They don't come to the camera or just early in the morning unless they're really sick, they something going on. But um, I'm drink some of this orange juice because my throat I mean, it's a little itchy. My COVID test came back negative, so, and I'm like, it's not COVID. You just coming down with a cold, like, uh, so I'm going to drink a little of this juice, and then I'm going to finish reading this devotion. But as I was saying, I got to say, in my bedroom, and my mother, my mother, she was there. She witnessed the whole thing. So, to those of you, you feel like you have to, you don't, you don't really have to be at a church to, you know, you don't really have to be at a church to give your life to Christ. I gave my life to Christ in my bedroom. You know, I repented. He came in to my heart in my bedroom. And um, I was just um, crying out to God. And he came in. And after my sister prayed for me, I just began to speak. And I just began to speak in tongues, speak in a heavenly language. So um, I encourage you, you do not. But like I say, and if you are already... Holy Ghost feel, uh, and you need a um, like I said, you need a touch up. You need another touch from the Lord. Just go in your prayer closet and just begin to just pray until you feel to the presence of the Lord come in, and you begin to speak in your head with heavenly language. You can get your touch up in prayer and uh, through prayer at home. So I just want to encourage you, uh, you need, even if you're in your car, just begin to pray. If you're somewhere like me at work, I pray all the time when I'm here at work. And if I don't have no students in the room with me, I just pray. I got my blessed oil and I just be touching stuff and just be praying because you just never know. Like, especially if you're working in a workplace with me with with, um, with children, I'm constantly like, I'm constantly, I'm not just praying for myself, but I'm praying for all these students. I'm praying for these students, asking God to cover these children with the blood of Jesus. Uh, some teachers, some teachers I see them, um, they don't feel like, um, they don't feel like they don't want to be here. And I just be asking God, Lord, touch them, help them, help them to be that teacher that they need to be, give them the strength that they need. So you can be wherever you at, wherever you work at, if you work in sales, whatever you work at, go in the bathroom and just pray. When I used to work at the daycare center, before I started my work day, I went I went in the bathroom and I prayed. I just prayed. So you want to start your work, start your day out with a morning devotion where it's prayer or you just reading God's word because you need it. Because you never know how your day is going to turn out. So I just want to encourage you, you know, start your morning out with a daily devotion. Okay, yeah, I'm going to drink some of this juice and finish reading this. throat is a little raspy and it says it never feels it never feels good to be told that we are wrong or that our reapproach could use some some fine tuning we are quick to become defensive so we avoid the insecurity all correction brings criticism is a part of life 
and it can be used as a positive tool. If we can train ourselves to listen to the words of others, to let them encourage us to do better, to learn, to change, we are giving ourselves the gift of growth. And that is so true because I used to be a person, the type of person where people would tell me and it'd be criticism and I just, because I'm, I'm kind of a sensitive person. And so now I have learned that that could either it could either make me or it can break me. I choose to let it make me, then break me, you know. Um, my senior pastor, he always said, look for the good. So when I'm hearing something or somebody telling me something, whether it's criticism, I'm like, okay, let me see. What's the good in that? What is the good in what they're telling me? So just look for the good. So, okay, um, you just, my Sunday school teacher, oh, my God. Now, I thank God for, like, I thank God for good um, leaders just pouring, you know, just pouring down, you know, knowledge, you know, godly wisdom in me. And one of my uh, my new converts teacher, when I was in new converts class, a new believers class, and she said, when you hear something, you hear a message. She said, you know how you have like meat, um, you take your meat off the bone. So she said, what you doing, you take what's beneficial. You take what's beneficial to you and the rest that you just like, okay, but this is beneficial. I'm going to use this. So when you hear criticism, you just think before you just go off and explode. You just say, okay, wait, let me just think about, let me just, let me listen to what they are saying. You know, like be a good listener. Um, like I said, my uh, pastor, he taught on the importance of listening to the voice of God. And he was telling, uh, we was telling the story about Noah, how God told Noah to build the ark. And I said, Noah was a good listener. Noah was a good listener because that's how, that's how he was able um, to build the ark because he was, he listened to God. He listened, he detailed detail by detail he listened like okay he told me um to do this he told me to do that Noah was taking it all in and as he took it all in he was like okay this is what my father told me to do he told me to do this he told me to do that and the art people might thought Noah was crazy but the art was built and you know he saved his you know saved his family you know even animals so um yes and um, we can train ourselves to listen to the words of others, to let them encourage us to do better, to learn, to change. We are giving ourselves the gift of growth. If we consistently reject advice, if we consistently reject advice, we give pride. We give pride the ability to harden our hearts and we learn nothing. I'm going to read that again. If we consensus if we consensusly reject advice, we give pride the ability to harden our hearts and we learn nothing. We don't grow. We don't obtain wisdom. We become we become we become stunned. We become stunned from our own inabilities and unwillingness to listen. Don't let pride, don't let pride become your stumbling block. And then there's a prayer. I want to say uh, a prayer and it said, God, please, God, please help me to let others, God, please help me to let other, others' corrections be, be heard so I can grow in wisdom, grow in me a humbleness that allows, a humbleness that allows for scratching and maturing. And that's the daily devotion for today, um, disruptive. Destructive, destructive pride. So, um, I pray that you all was blessed by this morning prayer and um, daily devotion. Until next time, it's your girl Melissa. Be blessed in Jesus' name.